Agarian reformed efforts under Marcos. President Marcos declared martial law in 1972, enabling him to essentially wipe out the landlord-dominated Congress. Through his technocrats, he was able to expand executive power to start a fundamental restructuring of government, including its efforts in solving the deep structural problems of the countryside. President Tal Decree Number 27, or the Code of Agarian Reform of the Philippines, became the core of Agarian Reform during Marcos' regime. Primary Source Presidential Decree Number 27, 21 October 1972. This shall apply to tenant farmers of private agricultural lands primarily devoted to rice and corn under a system of share crop or lease tenancy, whether classified as landed estate or not. The tenant farmer, whether in land classified as landed estate or not, shall be deemed owner of a portion constituting a family-sized farm of 5 hectares if not irrigated and 3 hectares if irrigated. For the purpose of determining the cost of the land to be transferred to the tenant farmer, pursuant to this decree, the value of the land shall be equivalent to two and one half times the average harvest of three normal crop years immediately preceding the promulgation of this decree. In case of default, the amortization due shall be paid by the farmer's cooperative in which the defaulting tenant farmer is a member with the cooperative having a right of recourse against him. The government shall guarantee such amortization with share of stock in government-owned and government-controlled corporations. No title to the land owned by the tenant farmers under this decree shall be actually issued to a tenant farmer unless and until the tenant farmer has become a full pledge member of the duly recognized farmers cooperative. Title to land acquired pursuant to this decree of the land reform program of the government shall not be transferable except by hereditary succession or the government in accordance with the provision of this decree, the code of occurring reforms and other existing laws and regulations. The Department of Agrarian Reform through its secretary is hereby empowered to promulgate rules and regulations for the implementation of this decree. Operation Land Transfer on lands occupied by tenants of more than 7 hectares on rice and corn lands commence in true legal compulsion and in an improved delivery of support service to small farmers. Ag Agrarian Reform seem to be final finally achievable. Under the RISE Self-Sufficiency Program, Masagana 99 farmers were able to borrow from banks and purchase, purchase three hectare plots of lands and agricultural inputs. Many other methods were employed by the elite to find a way to maintain the power and dominance which were worsened by the corruption of Marcos and his cronies who were also involved in, a, in the agricultural sector. The overthrow of Marcos and 1987 constitution resulted in a renewed interest and attention to agrarian reform as President Corazon Aquino envisioned agrarian reform to be the centerpiece of the her administration. Social legislation which provide difficult because her background betrayed her. She came from a family of wealthy and landed clan that owned the Hacienda Luisita. On July 22, 1987, Aquino issued Presidential Proclamation 131 and Executive Order 229, which outlined her land reform program. In 1988, the Congress passed Republic Act Number 6000. 657 or the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law or CARL, which introduced the program with the same name, Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program or CARL. It enabled the redistribution of agricultural lands to tenant farmers from landowners. 
However, allow under law to voluntarily divest a proportion of their capital stock, equity, or participation in favor of their workers or other qualified beneficiaries in, instead of turning over their land to the government. CARP was limited because it accomplished very little during the administration of Aquino. It only accomplished 22.5% of land distribution in six years owing to the fact that Congress, dominated by the landed elite, was unwilling to found the high comp compensation cost of the program. It was also mirrored in the Converse since Aquino seemingly bowed down to the pressure of her relatives by allowing the stock redistribution option. Hacienda Luisita recognized itself in the uh, cooperation and distributed stocks to farmers. Under the term of President Ramos, CARP implementation was suspended in order to meet the 10-year time frame, despite limitations and constraint and in fundings, logistic and participation of involved sectors. By 1996, the Department of Agrarian Reform, or DAR, distributed only 58.25% of the total area target to be covered by the program to address the lacking funding and the dwindling time for the implementation of CARP. Ramos signed Republic Act No. 8532 in 1998 to amend CARP and extended the program to another 10 years. <laughs> The new deadline of CARP expired in 2008, leaving 1.2 million former beneficiaries and 1.6 million hectares of agricultural land to be distributed to farmers. In 2009, President, President Arroyo signed a Republic Act No. 9700 for the Comprehensive Agri and Reform Program Extension with reforms or known as a Carper, uh, the mandatory law that extends the deadline to five more years. Section 30 of the law mandates that any case and or proceeding involving implementation of the provisions of CARP as amended, uh, which may remain pending on 30 June 2014, shall be allowed to uh, proceed its finality and executed even beyond such date. From 2009 to 2014, Carver has distributed a total of 1 million hectares of land to 900,000 farmer beneficiaries. After 27 years of land reform and two Aquino administration, 500,000 hectares of land remain undistributed. The DAR and the Department of Environmental and Natural Resources, DNR, are the government agencies mandated to fulfill CARP and CARPER, but even the combined effort and resources of the two agencies have proved incapable of fully achieving the goal of agrarian reform in the Philippines. The same problems have plagued its implementation, the powerful landed lead and the ineffectual uh, bureaucracy of the Philippine government. Until these two challenges are uh, surmounted, genuine agrarian reform in the Philippines remains but a dream to Filipino farmers who have been fighting uh, for their rights to the land ownership for centuries.